I hope you guys are ready for a book haul. A book haul so big that I'm gonna have to do it in two parts. We better get started. Welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and a fantastic week. I am here today to do part one of a ginormous book haul. But first, I am home alone. Well, I have all five of my fur babies here. And as if you are a pet owner, actually, if you are a parent of any type, you know when you are talking and you are not talking to your fur children or your baby children, um, they automatically assume you're talking to them. So it is very likely I will get a visitor or a guest. I actually have Berkeley sitting right here staring at me, so I'm pretty sure he'll try to jump up before we know it. So if we get an interruption, they'll say hi and I'll try to get them down. Uh, today we are going to be doing a book haul. These are going to be all books that I have been sent by publishers. I have been very, very blessed over the last 30 days to be sent some amazing titles. Also, I have been doing a ton of book shopping myself, so I have so many books to teach you, teach you, tell you, to tell you about, and I cannot wait. So get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads, get out however you keep control of your TBR. As always, if you are so able, please pre-order these books from your local independent bookstore and or your library. However you get your hands on the books that you read, please do it. Support these authors because you know how it is. We love to do that, don't we? Um, we're going to actually start with a book that was sent to me unsolicited from Amazon Crossing. Now, Amazon Crossing is the subsidiary of the Amazon Publishing Group that fa focuses on translated fiction. And they sent me Mama Hisa's Mice by Saad al Sanausi, translated by Sawad Hussein from the Arabic. Now, this is a Kuwaiti novelist, and I realized as I was sitting here racking my brain, I don't think I've actually ever read a book set in Kuwait. So I'm really excited about that in the forefront. And this book actually sounds really, really good. So this is the story of three friends. Three uh, friends. Um, I'm going to try to say these names and I'm going to apologize. Katkut, Fad, and Sadiq. With, um, who share neither ethnic origin nor religious denomination. They only share friendship and a rage against the unconscionable secretarian divide turning their lives into a war zone rubble. To lay bare the ugly truths, they form the protest group Fawad's Kids. Their righteous transgressions have made them targets of both Sunni and Shia's extremists. They've also elicited the concern of Fawad's grandmother, Mama Hisa, a story-spinning font of piety wisdom, superstition, and dire warnings who causes them, uh, um, who cautions them that they should not anger God or the sky will surely fall. I think that sounds fantastic. Now, I didn't, I had never heard of this, um, the novelist um, Saad al Um but he won the International Prize for Arabic Fiction for a book called The Bamboo Stock in 2013, and this book was nominated for the 2016-7 Sheikh Zayed Book Award, and his first novel was published in 2010 and won the fourth Laila Ol Othman Prize, a prestigious award for novels and short stories by young writers. So I'm excited to get on this train because it sounds like, one, this book sounds awesome, and it sounds like this uh, writer has an immense amount of talent. So that is Mama He Says Mice by Saad Al Sanausi, translated by Sawad Hussein from the Arabic, and this comes out on November 12th, 2019. You guys might not know this about Amazon Publishing. I think this is an interesting sort of a, a side. They publish both the hardback and the paperback on the same exact day. So if you prefer to get the paperback version of a book that's coming out from them, you can actually get that at the same time that you can get the hardback. Okay. The next book I got, I read about, I want to say in Publishers Weekly, Weekly, months and months ago, and I actually sent an email to New Directions Press saying, hey, is there any way that I can get a copy of that? It sounds fantastic. And they said, you know what, we're out, but we'll send you a finished copy. I am so thankful that they sent me The Factory by Hiroko Amada, oh, Amada? 
and I'm gonna hang that up there. I'm saying that with a Spanish accent, which is absolutely wrong because it's Japanese. And it's translated from the Japanese by David Boyd. This is one of those slim little novels that I just feel is going to have such a punch. This is the story of three people that work in a, a factory. They all have a very straightforward, repetitive jobs. It says here that one shreds paper, one proofreads documents, and the other studies moss growing over the expanse of grounds. And it says, but slowly their lives become governed by the work. Days take on a strange logic and momentum, and little by little, the margins of reality seem to be dissolving. Where does the factory end and the rest of the world begin? What's going on with the strange animals in here? And after a while, it could be weeks or years, the three workers struggle to answer the most basic question. What am I doing here? I cannot wait. I think I'm gonna jump on this book. This is gonna be read so soon. And that is The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada. And this is translated again by the Japanese, from the Japanese by David Boyd. And I apologize, they didn't send me a little thing. I'm pretty sure this comes out in the month of November. Um, but I am really, really excited for this one. The next book really needs no introduction and actually needs almost two people to hold it up here for you guys. And that is Duck's Newberry Port by Lucy Elman. This was shortlisted for the Booker Prize. And as you guys may have heard, it comes in at just under a lovely thousand pages. Um, this is the story of a Ohio housewife in her 30s, basically uh, her thoughts through an entire day. If you guys haven't heard, this is technically, I think, eight sentences long, but most of the book is one continuous sentence. Everyone I know who has read this book has told me that it is definitely worth the time. Um, and I'm excited for it. This is what makes me nervous though. Because it is one sentence, it is pages and pages of that. So that makes me nervous, I'll be honest, but I have to say thank you very, very much to um, the, uh, it's actually the Canadian publisher, I believe, Biblioasis in Windsor, Ontario, who sent me a copy of this book. I am really excited about it. I have a feeling this is going to be one that I'm going to have to dedicate a bit of time to. Um, but it is out now. You can get your hands on Ducks Newberry Port by Lucy Elman. And it was, from what I hear, it is unstoppable to read once you start reading it. It's just diving in. And my friend Doris said she weighed this book and it is officially three pounds and it feels like three pounds. So it's intimidating, but I also think probably going to be very, very rewarding. It's hard though, because I opened it up just to sort of like skim the pages to see like what the writing style was. And when it's all one sentence, there's really, a, it's hard to find that place to start and stop. I think it's gonna become one of those things that's gonna become part of the narrative. The next book fascinates me, and I have to thank Pantheon Books for sending me a copy of Mary Toft or the Rabbit Queen by Dexter Palmer. Now, Dexter Palmer wrote Version Control. I don't know if you guys remember that book, have a feeling you would remember the cover. Um, but it was um, really popular a few years ago. And this is coming out in January of 2020. And this is based upon a true story in the 1800s. No, I'm sorry, in the 1700s, 1726, I believe, in a small town where a young woman sort of confounds the scientific community by giving birth to rabbits. I said it. She gave birth to rabbits. And this is a fictionalized story of that entire event. My friend Anne Kingman said that this book is fantastic and I trust her very, very much. And I think the cover is just freaking brilliant. So this is Mary Toft or the Rabbit Queen, a novel by Dexter Palmer. This is coming out from Pantheon Books, who did The Memory Police, which you guys know I absolutely loved. So I trust them. And it is coming out in January, 2020. Next is a book I am super fascinated by, and by a publisher I don't know much about, but this is coming out from Amistad Publishing in December of 2019. Um, let me see. Oh, they probably have an actual date on the paper. December 10th, 2019. And this is um, Africaville by Jeffrey Colvin, and I just want to hold that up there. This is set at the end of the 18th century based upon a colony in Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, settled by former slaves. And it is the story, sort of the family saga of, um, of a 
family saga of a family. That makes sense, Russell. A family saga set within this community of um, ex-slaves that have come and settled within Nova Scotia. Now, this is actually based on a, a true historical place, which I had not heard of, which you know how I love books to teach me something that I don't know anything about. Um, and I am super excited about this. And um, I think it's going to be really awesome. And it says here, um, it chronicles three generations of the Subalt family, Caffiella, her son Omar, and her grandson Warner, as their lives unfold against the tumultuous events of the 20th century. So that is Africaville by Jeffrey Colvin, again, out from Amistad Publishing, again, on December 10th. I think this one sounds really good. I started reading it when it came in. That is sort of the thing that happens to me. A book comes in and I'm like, oh, I'm going to wait a little bit because I want to get closer to the day it's due. And then I start reading it, and I'm like, Russell, stop, and it's so good. You know how it is. You know how it is when you try to put a book off. It just never happens. The next book was kindly sent to me, and it is out already by Harper, and that is um, Tahana Lies Butterfly Yellow. And this is, um, she was the writer of the book, um, oh, Inside, hold on a second, you know, Inside Out and Back Again, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal um, middle grade book told in verse. Um, and this is, this story sounds actually really sad. This is the story of a young girl in, from Vietnam who goes to the airport one day with her young brother to try to get them out of Vietnam. And her brother is actually torn from her arms and taken to America. And she is not, un, she is not able to leave. So she winds up staying in Vietnam for another six years before she is able to come to the U.S. And she winds up in Texas. And she is on the hunt and the search for her brother. And she meets an American, um, I believe he is described as a big, uh, a city boy with big rodeo dreams, Leroy is. And she and he hunt for her brother. And then what happens once they are reunited and sort of the fact that does her brother even remember her from his youth. So one, can we take a moment? That cover is something gorgeous. So this is out now. This is... Tahana Lies Butterfly Yellow out from Harper. I'm going to hold that up there. Beautiful. Okay, then I was utterly spoiled. The last three books are all from Algonquin books because they sent me three books and they just spoiled me with this package. All of these books are out right now so you can get your hands on them or order them if you so wish. The first is Ordinary Girls by Yakira Diaz. This is a memoir about being a queer Latina. Um, I heard her speak and read part of her book at Book Expo America and it was phenomenal. Now this book is gritty. It deals with drugs, it deals with gangs, it deals with sexuality, but it also is really full of heart and hope. Um, and um, yeah, she was phenomenal. So she is actually on a book tour right now. So if you guys can find her, I highly recommend seeing her in person because I thought she just blew me away. And so this is Ordinary Girls, a memoir by Yakira Diaz, and this is out now. You can get your hands on it, I promise. The next two books have also come out this year, and this one is Sugar Run by Mesha Marin. And this one, I'm actually gonna read a bit from both of the next two, just to make sure I don't get it right. So this one is set in 1989, and Jody is our main character. She was sentenced to life in prison, but after 18 years, she is released. Released not really knowing that she was ever going to be released. So all of a sudden, she is out at a bus stop, what is she going to do? She knows that she cannot return to her Appalachian past. There's just reason she shouldn't go home. So she winds up heading south, where there she meets and falls in love with Miranda, a, tr a troubled young mother living in a motel room with her children. Together, they head toward what they hope will be a fresh start. Well, what they, but what do you do with your past? And with a town and a family that refuses to forget or to change. I think that sounds so good. So that is Sugar Run by Misha Marin. And this is out now. Again, Algonquin Books, you guys. So this thing. Next, we're going to go into a dystopian book. And that is another fantastic cover. Just take a moment. The Lightest Object in the Universe by Kimmy Easel. I'm going to hang that up there just again so you guys can see it. Oh, cover. Cover. Love it. Love it. Okay. Um, but this is the one that I'm going to read the most of because I want to make sure I get it all. What if at the end of times allowed people to see and build the world anew? This is the landscape that Kimmy Essel creates in her surprising and original debut novel. 
In this new world, Carson, on the East Coast, is desperate to find is desperate to find to Beatrix, a woman on the West Coast who holds his heart. Working his way along a cross-country railroad line, he encounters lost souls, clever opportunists, and those who believe they'll be saved by an evangelical preacher in the middle of the country. While Carson travels west, Beatrix and her neighbors begin to construct the kind of cooperative community that suggests the end could in be, in fact, a bright beginning. Without any modern means of communication, will Beatrix and Carson find their way to each other, and what will be left of the old world if they do? The answers may lie within a 15-year-old girl who could ultimately decide the fate of the lovers. Oh, gosh, that sounds so good. <laughs> it does. So that's The Lightest Object in the Universe by Kimmy Easel. I'm going to hold that up there because that is, again, a gorgeous cover. So that is a stack of books, a stack of books that have been sent to me by publishers. I'm going to hold them up for you as soon as I get them all. But I'm a little worried I'm not going to be able to hold them all because Duxbury New, uh, Ducks Newburyport is three pounds in itself. Uh, so there you go. Please don't fall over. This is a stack of books that has been sent to me by the publishers over the last 30 days. I hope all of them wind up on your TBR. Have you guys had a chance to think about any of them, read any of them, do any of them super duper excite you? As always, I really appreciate if you are returning to my channel. I thank you so very, very much. If you are new to my channel, I really, really hope you like what you see. You subscribe and you come around for more. As always, until next time, I recommend shop locally, read globally, and until next time, happy reading. Bye!